The discovery of hydrocarbons has changed the fortune of many places across the globe, but it is not achieved effortlessly. The issue of oil exploration in Nagaland is a complicated one and though the presence of hydrocarbons has been discovered many years back, the exploration has not seen its full bloom due to many reasons. With the issue resurfacing again as oil exploration crusaders and many civil bodies has raised the concern of the need to resume exploration, Hornbill TV took an interview with one of the crusaders, Mayabi A. Nipie, who is spearheading the campaign in the state to have a lucid understanding of what oil exploration in Nagaland can mean to the people of the state. These are remnants of an abandoned oil drilling site at Changpang village, Woka district of Nagaland. Changpang village, a reservoir of hydrocarbons, has been left stagnant with black sludge encrusted around the oil rigs since 2014. The oil issue in Nagaland, which has often been entangled in politics, is resurfacing with oil exploration crusaders advocating the resumption of exploration. Mayabi Arho Nipi, one of the crusaders who is working as a deputy general manager, at Oil India Limited based in Thuliajan, Assam has been very vocal about the need to start the exploration and has been campaigning for the same. I'm not a geologist, I'm not a geophysicist, I'm not an engineer, or I am not even a subject matter expert in that context. But the little experience that I've got and that I've been seeing over the last few years of my service career I thought this was one area which if we can replicate if I can help the Nagas replicate I thought it would be good for the present generation as well as for the future generation where they can reap the benefits of what our mother nature has gifted to the Nagas for the last 30 years Plus, I've been working with this oil company another few years and I will be retiring from services. What came to my mind was, I started questioning, is there anything that I can contribute for my Naglin? Are there some ways where I can educate the Nagas? So this was one area which struck me, which made me to start campaigning. He has been writing articles and interacting with the state leaders for this campaign. There are three E's. One is the energy, which means power. The other one is the economy. And the third one is employment. So these are the three principal movers which will actually take Naglin onto a different platform altogether. Having worked outside Naglin for all these years, I haven't seen much of uh, economic progress as far as uh, industries are concerned, or say income generating manufacturing uh, plants or factories coming up in Naglin. We are speaking about the fossil fuel. Fossil fuel, as far as Naglin is concerned, we are made to believe that we have huge reserves. But unfortunately, uh, even after 60 years of statehood, I think we Nag Nagas have not been able to make much progress on this. So if we can actually tap on our energy resources, which we believe is the crude oil reserves, in Naglin, then I'm sure we can be self-reliant as far as energy is concerned. Oil, christened the black liquid gold, was first extracted in Naglin full scale in the year 1981 at the villages of Changpang and Old Sori, both located in Wokha district. Though the state government has already permitted the Oil and Natural Gas Corporation to explore in 1973, 
However, production stopped 13 years later in 1994 due to protests. After two decades, Naglan government gave a permit to a newcomer, the Metropolitan Oil and Gas Private Limited under the Naglan Petroleum and Natural Gas Rules 2012. Landowners and tribal bodies said their proposals for how contracts should be structured were not taken on board. The issue reached the court when the Lotha Hobo filed a PIL in 2014. On October 8, 2015, the Guwahati High Court stayed oil exploration in Changpa. Then there is the debate of who owns what with Article 371A of the Indian Constitution taking the centre stage. Actually, we should thank our predecessors for uh, introducing this very unique, special provision in the Indian Constitution, Article 371A, which says that the land and its mineral resources will belong to the Naga people. So this particular special provision is nowhere applicable in any other state. So, because of this Article 371A, we have been able to preserve our land, our mineral resources. Not to make use of the mineral resources will be a great loss for the Nagas because, as all of us know, the nations are moving towards clean fuel energy sources. They are slowly going to uh, take away the fossil fuel and they will be shifting on to some cleaner fuels, more renewable sources of energy like uh, solar, hydrogen, uh, wind energy, and electric energy. The focus towards cleaner energy, renewable energies, alternate energies, those things are coming. It's coming slowly in a big way. But the use of crude oil for generating uh, energy as such will not suddenly stop at one time. No? It will gradually, slowly and steadily, it will, uh, it will decline. The usage of crude oil will slowly decline. So until then, the Nagas still have an, a window of opportunity to actually get into the exploration for oil and gas. As far as economic development is concerned, we don't have a really thriving, sustaining, income generating kind of a economy. Our next door neighbor, Assam, they are really into it because uh, I'll just take the case of uh, the company for which I work, Oil India. From Oil India alone, Assam government gets a royalty of almost 2,000 crores per year. So I'm leaving aside the other industries, like you have uh, ONGC is also the Indian oil is also the. So you can imagine the royalty amount that must be coming to the state exchequer. No? Whereas out here we are we claim that okay we are having oil resource reserves but actually we are not able to make use of it the industry especially the oil industry oil industry is one industry which can absorb all kinds of uh, disciplines from professionals to non-professionals from very skilled to unskilled the company absorbs everybody it, it is a it is a very good uh, employment generator. There are very stringent rules and regulations, compliances, uh, statutory uh, permissions that needs to be obtained first before going for an exploration. Like for instance, you need to get a environmental clearance before actually carrying out your operations. And then we have all these forest clearances. Then we also have all this consent to operate, consent to establish. These are all permissions which are required, which has to be given by the state government concerned. 
So only when they see that things are okay, the environment won't be damaged, or say things will be done in a proper scientific way, then only these permissions are given. So as far as the oil industry is concerned, they take very good care of the environment. The petroleum operations, or say the oil and gas operations, these are something different from the mining operations. There is a misconception, especially when we speak about the ENP business. ENP means exploration and production. There is a lot of stages that a company has to get through in order to reach that production stage. So the first one is, we call it the exploration phase, where the company or where an oil company comes in and then it makes a survey of the area. So oil exploration, seismic survey happens first. Then those seismic data which is collected, we call it the GNG, geological and geophysical data. So this data which is collected through the seismic survey, this is taken out and then it is put into a process of, uh, they, they call it API, data acquisition, processing, interpretation. So this data is put through this API process and then from there they come up with different models. And then they will also get an estimate, an idea of where crude oil might be deep down beneath. And then they will identify areas. After that only, then they do an exploratory drilling. So in exploratory drilling also, the success rate is, um, uh, it, it, it is never 100%. So once you do an exploratory drilling and then you actually go and strike oil, then that is when you make a declaration saying, okay, we have discovered an oil field. So from that point onwards, it enters into the production phase. So we have this exploration phase and the production phase. So from exploration phase to get into production phase, did itself takes a period of maybe uh, four years to eight years. So that is the duration. We cannot straight away uh, get into the production phase. The government of Naglen and the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, they are trying to come up with a memorandum of understanding, which will also deal with all these issues. And once this MOU is finalized, we are all hopeful that something will be worked out. As we all know, the state government or say the, the machineries, the departments, which are dealing with this subject, no? they are doing their best, no doubt. But what I feel is there has to be a public pressure. The civic bodies, the students group, the local populace, people like you and me, all of us should make a, put a pressure on the government, maybe at the state level or say even in, at the central government. we presume or say that people speak around saying that Naglen has got some 600 million tons of crude oil. We don't really know where it is actually, unless we do an exploration. Irrespective of whatever you are, you may be an engineer, you may be a doctor, you may be a homemaker, you may be a preacher, any activity that you do, you always require energy. You speak about employment, you speak about infrastructure developments. You speak about the roads, the bridges, the involvement. The oil industry takes everybody along. Each of us individuals, individual Nagas, instead of just taking our cars out or say starting to build our constructions, we should also think about where this energy is coming from. How is it getting derived? Because tomorrow I may be having a two-story, three-story building, but if I don't have electricity, I mean, we already are experiencing the scorching heat. Tomorrow some, say our neighboring states, they cut off the fuel supplies 
and we are unable to run our vehicles because the price of petrol, diesel is rising. Now, we cannot blame anybody. We still have to run the show. And especially to the young entrepreneurs, all of them also need power, they need energy. So all of us should think, okay, how do we generate more energy so that we become self-sufficient? Because energy is the prime mover of everything. Once you have a constant energy, then you will be able to manufacture your enterprise. You'll be able to make your productions. With the productions, you will be able to sell your goods, services, and that's how income gets generated. Now the point is, let us all look at it from a long-term perspective, not just 10 years, 20 years from now. Let us look at it 20, 30 years down the line, or say the next generation. So the message is, we should uh, generate our own uh, energy to drive our economy so that we get a constant, consistent flow of income in the process employment also gets generated much i hope we get into it sooner than much sooner than sooner <laughs>